In this video, I'm traveling solo across the far north coast of Scotland in my 21 year old Land Rover, passing some of the most wild and isolated places en route. I've lost count how many times I've visited Scotland now, but it's always been a place I can truly think. I can reflect and focus on the present, the fine details, but also have the headspace and foresight to plan ahead and know what I want from my time on this spinning ball of rock. Scotland endlessly provides me clarity, freedom, and humbles me each and every time. I guess that's why I keep returning to this wild and untamed landscape. What a beautiful day! I was not expecting this. And I've got the mountain all to myself. This is hard going now. The track got very steep, very rocky. The cloud is coming really thick now, so I don't think I'll have any views, but I'm nearly there. It is wet. <sighs> this is crazy. I made it. Let's get over to this trig point, which is the summit of Ben Hope. It is so snowy. Complete white out. This is amazing. This is truly amazing. As I descended the crazy weather after being so cold up there, I returned to the distant views and the warmth, which felt divine. I'm now back at Percy. It feels good to be back. I've taken my shoes off and my layers and it feels really lovely tuna and cucumber wrap to go. <laughs> From there the road headed west and the landscape changed dramatically. I have just arrived at my park up. I'm super chilled, but you can see this beautiful beach that I'm parked near. Lovely sandy beach, so I might go check that out in a minute, but I'm pretty happy with where I've parked. It's on a really quiet, narrow lane, and it's a little bit on the slopey side, but I think we'll get away with it. That had to be 
one of the most gorgeous drives ever. It was so lovely. I know I keep saying this about everything here, but it was it was so I'm just lost for words. It was just it was really hard to explain. It just felt really wild. The sun was setting, the colors were amazing. You it finally cleared so you can see all the snow-capped mountains. It was just amazing. I've had my dinner, I am pretty chilled out and I think I'll be getting an early one. It's been an amazing day, I've really enjoyed it and I've got a few bits planned for tomorrow but mainly getting some work done. I really need to start editing my video that's due, my next video. And then I'm also thinking of going to the cave that I was on about, Smoo Cave, that's also another idea. This journey is proven to be so cool and I've really loved it and the North Coast 500 has been really epic and I've seen so many beautiful things so far. Good morning! It is the most beautiful day. It is so stunning this morning. I laid in bed for a while because I really didn't want to get up and I just looked out at the windows um over at the sea and the sunrise coming up and it was just amazing it's another clear day it's blue skies which is insane i remember i got a lot of comments on my first video that i did about the yellow weather warnings of the rain and everyone was like that's usual for scotland like that's it always rains in scotland what are you on about but ever since that day it's been pretty much clear skies every day. We've had some rainy showers, we've had a bit of snow, but apart from that it's been like this, which is amazing. I'm no weather expert, I was just being very hopeful about the weather, like every Brit does, and it's been really nice and it's paid off and that was the worst bit of weather I've experienced on this trip, so I feel really, really grateful for the weather that I've had. And I just wish I had a roof tent really to be able to sleep up there and see the views from up high and experience roof tent life. I do miss it. I do miss being down here in the evening and then climbing up the ladder into my roof tent in the evenings, but it is what it is. I had a phone call this morning and locked in some really cool stuff for the summer coming and I'm really, really excited. It is really, really cool and I cannot wait to share with you sometime soon what the plans are. As well, I did get a lot of comments on my recent video saying how can you afford this lifestyle, like having bills and things and also travelling so much in this and all my travelling and I don't have many outlays, I don't have a house, I don't rent, I don't have any kids, I don't have these outlays that cost so much, I just my only outlay is my phone and that's it and I wanted it to be that way. I saved a lot of money to buy this vehicle and to travel initially but this channel and all the outlets around it do afford this fairly cheap lifestyle. All I have to afford is fuel and food <laughs> and that is it, that is literally it and obviously when I do go abroad flight money. but. On the scheme of things it's not very expensive i don't go away and spend loads of money on hotels and eating out and fancy cruises or anything like that i it's either backpacking bike packing or living in this and once you've spent out the initial outlay for the setup or for your bike kit or your hiking kit then you're pretty much good to go and you don't need to spend loads of money i think that's a really nice way of traveling you don't have to spend loads of money you're just enjoying it for the adventure and the raw feeling that you get from it. Obviously it's not luxury living in the back of here, not having a shower for six days now um, and obviously not having loads of space, not having loads of luxury items. I'm now living on pasta because I didn't have enough space to have carry the amount of fresh food and there's obviously not 
many stores up here I don't think there is any shops up here so <laughs> it it's like that and I have the best times when it's like this when I'm struggling and it's a bit of a challenge you really find out who you are and you really enjoy the area you're in and the adventure you're having and you really feel like you're in the present in the moment and you don't have loads to moan about because you just appreciate the true simple things and I think that's what's magical about human powered adventure and overlanding like this. So I'm currently having a little sort out. I've just come outside. I've swept everywhere. I'm sorting all the kit that's everywhere. Obviously when you're in a small space, it quickly gets messy and having boots on and things, the floor's just covered in like grit, sand, mud. So I've just been sweeping and got so much stuff. Right, I've sorted everything in the car now, which feels really good. I feel like I'm all ready and set to head on again. And I've managed to get quite a bit of editing done today for the next video for all you lovely people. So hopefully that's on for tomorrow. And yeah, it's sort of just been an admin, get everything sorted sort of day. It is now half three. We've still got a few more hours until it goes dark. So I thought, I might check out this beach that's down here, this beautiful sandy beach, and also go to the cave, Smoo Cave, that I really wanted to check out um, and go there. I also want to go to a convenience store that's like a tiny little local store and get some supplies and also some fuel for my spare diesel heater tank um, because there's a fuel station and then we should be good to go. Mm. So the other day I mentioned about the red phone boxes and I really wanted to see if they're still in use, which they are. It is 60p to make a call and I just find that crazy. I find this really cool that they're still in use up here. It's really nice to see. So as you've probably guessed, I am heading to Shmoo Cave. So I've just parked, there's a car park behind me where I saw that um, phone box and I can just see the entrance of Shmoo Cave. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I've got it to myself. That would be really cool. Located on the rugged northwest, Smoo Cave was formed by sea and freshwater erosion. It is believed to have once been used in the Stone Age, 5,000 years ago. The name Smoo is believed to have come from the Norse term Shmuga, which translates hole or hiding place. What a beautiful and fascinating cave system it is, with its fresh waterfall and large skylight.
today has been amazing it's been so cool i absolutely love the cave the cave was insane and then there was a walk afterwards just a small walk to a viewpoint that looked over to the sea and the surrounding mountains and it was oh it was insane it was so good i'm currently at another park up and the rain has started so i've timed it so well with the weather but it's quite cozy now i've got the diesel heater on i've had my dinner and the rain is starting to come down Good morning, we are on our next leg of the journey now, which is really exciting. But this area is very remote. It's one of the last wild and remote places in Scotland, I feel like. There's no shops, there's no hospitals, there's no big petrol stations. It's very, very desolate. And you can definitely feel that as you drive along this place. It's very out there and you've got to be sort of off-grid and self-reliant. I'm guessing the locals don't rely on these tiny convenience stores and maybe get a lot of food shipped in and then must freeze it or have some sort of alternative. But yeah, I highly respect the people who live up here on the north coast. It's just, it's insane how you're definitely shut off from the rest of the UK when it does come to convenience and sort of fast food, fast fashion, all of the things that don't really matter. It seems like these people have got it sussed almost and they're putting priorities first and must be so more in touch with what life really is. So sort of reflecting back on my comment a minute ago about this place being the last remote sort of place in the UK and my points for that is not just because the way things are run there's barely any shops you've got to drive a long long way to get to a, like a big supermarket or like a fuel station or a hospital or all the things we take for granted like just doing normal shopping and just being so in touch with the ease or the simplicity of I need a pint of milk I'm literally gonna run to the shops or just dash to the shops and get some. It's very like that in the UK because we're such a small island. So coming up here, it's very different. It feels very shut off. But I know there's a lot of places in the world like this, but I think what makes this slightly different to a lot of the other first world countries is it just feels so hostile. The environment is very savage. You can see why the SAS, which is our special forces and the army do a lot of training around this area because it is very very hostile and it's a hard environment and it's wet it's damp it's boggy and there's no trees there's no shelter so that adding with the aspect of how sort of out the way it is and it is a very unique place Scotland and that's why I've fallen in love with it hence why the people are in love with it and hence why the Vikings loved it
it feels so surreal being back here with a pack on, with wet feet, <laughs> two years on, from over two years I think it is. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a very, very strange feeling and that trail meant so, so much to me. So being back here now is just, I've been hit with a lot of beautiful emotions and quite sad to be honest, thinking how long ago that was and what's happened since and how your life changes and who you are. But this trail meant so much to me and I feel like it was a big turning point in my life and it was a massive achievement for me. I was 19 when I hiked this trail and it was a big ordeal. Um, I faced a lot of challenges and hurdles and barriers physically and mentally and this place just means so much to me. short-lived. I've now put very sandy feet back into socks. <laughs> the rain is coming in and the wind is so bad it splashes all that sand in your eye. I didn't get out as far as I hoped in the sea. It's too windy and wavy. The next morning I packed up, tried to get all the sand out of Percy that was everywhere and headed south. Following this route flooded my mind with memories from the Cape Wrath Trail. I think at this moment it finally sunk in that the journey was unfortunately coming to an end. Right, so I am now on the shores of Loch Assen, and this is a very, very beautiful area. And like I said earlier, we are in a geopark. So that technically means we're in a very old and ancient landscape. And I'll just read off the board because it says it in a lot better words than I do. But the ground in front of us is Lucian Nice. This rock formed nearly 3,000 million years ago, making it one of the oldest on the planet. The mountains beyond are formed from a thick layer of a certain type of sandstone laying down on top of the gneiss. Vast rivers flow through the old gneiss, depositing sand that settled on it like a blanket. The sandstone completely covered and preserved the hills and valleys of the ancient rocky landscape. 
So the ice sheets and glaciers that spread across Scotland during the last two million years have scraped away almost all of the pale Cambrian quartzite and red sandstone shaping the mountains and uncovering the ancient nice landscape beneath which is obviously 3,000 million years old. So that's another thing I do love about Scotland. It has so much rich history and there's so much information about how this landscape was formed and it's, it's crazy. windy I can't believe the weather and it's supposed to be like this tomorrow so I'm kind of glad that I made the call of not doing Svelin tomorrow if that's how you say it and that's the mountain it's not a big mountain it's not amazingly tall or a long distance or anything like that it's just a really iconic mountain for its shape it's a very very unusual shape as you can see it's really beautiful and I saw this in one of the stores today and it was 50p and I thought I'm gonna keep that because one it's beautiful and two it will be a sort of reminder that I really want to come back and do it I am now in Alapal, back in civilization. As you can see, there's a Tesco over there. I'm just in a car park and I've just waterproofed up as I'm going to go out in the rain as it's raining here. What I want to do is just have a look around and I really want to go into a cafe just to get a bit of work done because once you're sitting in the back here for a little while doing stuff on a laptop, <laughs> it's very like you feel very hunched over and it's yeah I just fancy to change the scenery so I'm gonna sit in a cafe for a little bit have a look around and then come back and move on further south but I just got recognized which was really lovely a nice guy come over and said hello so thank you for saying hello Steve it was great meeting you Rusty red on her shoulder I was cleaning her shoe When it clicked on the throttle world In the bright morning dew We brushed and we braided Dandelions and shoes Bye bye Alapol, that is the end of Alapol it was really nice having a look around. A lot of places were just shut, like the shops there and cafes, and 
it felt really just dead and really quiet and I think it's just the time of year it's just everywhere is quiet and things are closed this time of year I called about five campsites today and they're all just shut for the season um, apart from one where I'm heading to now to get a shower the first one in nine or ten days so it's gonna feel lovely it's gonna feel very nice <laughs> also the weather has been miserable today so it's been quite nice I sat in the coffee shop for quite a long time just sorting out some work bits which felt good to do so that's all done I've done a Tesco shop I've also got some fuel and filled up my diesel heater spare jerry can so everything feels like it's all topped up and ready to go which is always nice and then time I have a shower this evening that will feel amazing I'll feel reborn and ready to start the next leg of my journey which is really cool I had a look today at potential things I want to do but I saw earlier I'm going to extremely miss these quiet roads you barely pass anyone and it's so quiet and you don't pass anything apart from like these little clusters of towns like Ullapool is still a very very small town and it's just quiet and I really like it it's it's really nice I just you get addicted to it and when you go back into busier places it, it ruins you even coming to Alipur earlier I had to psych myself up to go around the town there it's awful it really grabs you when you spend a lot of time on your own or with one person and you're just always away from busy places it it's it's addictive yet again I'm just having a morning coffee in bed thought I'd treat myself and that's what's good about this small vehicle you can literally practically make coffee while you're still in your sleeping bag So everywhere I've been now, I tend to get a sticker just to have like a memory sort of thing to put on here. So I've got one from like Sweden, Canada, uh, the Lofton Islands, and now the North Coast 500, Scotland. Put that on there. I spent the night at Loch Marie and had a cold swim before departing south. Next time I'll be travelling around the beautiful Isle of Skye. Thank you so much for watching and to all my patrons for making this possible. I will see you in the next video. Take care.